How's it going everyone? My name is John and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to go ahead and take a look around at the other content, especially if you're wanting to learn how to live stream and how to grow your channel. I have many videos to help you guys out with that. So for this, it's a brand new series where I'm going to be talking about Streamlabs OBS, breaking it down to help you guys understand it. And the way I do my videos is I walk you through everything. That way you do understand for the most part, because I'm not an expert on the on the platform. It's all just me using it from personal use and just learning as I've used it. So I'm going to be sharing that with you guys to help you guys out. So let's go ahead and move forward. So the first thing you're going to want to do is actually install Streamlabs OBS. So if you go to the link in the video description, then you'll be able to go ahead and download it. Once you have it downloaded, go ahead and sign in whatever platform you're using, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, Mixer, Twitch, whatever. And once you are logged in, then we're going to go ahead and we're just going to kind of move around the navigations here. So right on the top right hand side, you have your name. Just make sure it is accurate for the actual account that you're trying to use. And when you click on the little gear, it's going to open up your settings. This here is just something that we're going to go into in a different video. And it, it, this is a video on its own, honestly, because there's so much stuff to talk about. Over there next to that is a little question mark that says get help. And then we have here face mask um, settings. This is going to be for those of you guys on Twitch. So that's what I'm signed into. I'm signed into my Twitch account. This next to it is their studio mode. This is going to be for everybody. The way studio mode works is the screen on the right hand side under live. That is what everyone is seeing. Over on the edit side, which is the left box, that is what you are manipulating before people can even see it. So say, for example, you are streaming and people are watching gameplay, or maybe you have your be right back screen up and you're wanting to fix something before you go into the game. So, you know, let's let's use that as a scenario. You, know, you have the, the be right back over here on the live side and over here you're messing with your main gameplay screen you're adjusting maybe your stream alerts or maybe your webcam box or something like that or maybe you're fixing lighting with your webcam and everything like that and you're trying to get that fixed so you're you know you're messing with all the information that's over here because now it's being displayed down here and you're not even showing what you're doing on this side over here just yet so they can't see you messing with anything over on the edit side of things and i'll go into that into more of like actual showing you how that works and everything right so that will be a whole separate video on its own but just basically what what you're doing here they won't see until you hit transition and that's a really nice feature that's what i like about the studio mode this right here i'm on night mode or you can be on daytime mode or whatever it's just too bright for me so i don't even worry about it now over here on the left hand side you have your live feed so this is where you're going to be able to see when people are hosting you or if they've subscribed or used the bits or you know so on and so forth like whatever information is usually shown on whichever one you signed in for so you'll be able to see like media you can see if anyone's redeemed any currency if you use the the bot that they have for Streamlabs they have the music player giveaways, live actions and stuff like that, like the wheel or credits and stuff like that. Mainly, most people just use it for the recent um, events. So that way people can see their what's going on with their stream here. They can adjust their audio stuff here. They have all their scenes right here. So everything's just kind of in like in one spot. Now for CloudBot, this is going to be the stuff with Streamlabs. Uh, Streamlabs bot. By the way, if you hear barking, it's my dogs. I can't stop them. That they just bark at every noise they hear outside. But yeah, so CloudBot, I believe, used to be called Chatbot. Um, I guess they changed it. But this is where you can set up an actual bot for Streamlabs for your account directly in Streamlabs OBS. For the App Store, I don't use the App Store, but there's different options here that you can purchase use trials for and if you guys want a video on anything um, dealing with this just let me know because this is also a whole nother video on its own too themes this is a very big one especially when people don't have the ability of making their own graphics they're not a graphic designer they don't have the money for a graphic designer 
you literally can go and select if you want animated or if you want it static and it will give you a bunch of different overlays basically so let's say we just i click i go to blue for everything <laughs> so this basically will give you an idea of just what you'll get for free you just install these and it looks professional it makes your stream look really good and it's it's a great it's a great resource but this is why it is going to be very resource heavy for whenever you guys are streaming with it now for for like widgets and stuff whenever people are like following or hosting or whatever you also have the options for those too so say for example if this ever loads there we go so you can see here so when someone follows you know you'll have that but you'll have it for donations you'll have it for subscribers and stuff like that so that's a really neat thing and you don't have to have an overlay like if you have your own overlay but you just want to have these widget themes you can have the widget themes and not a scene theme or you can do a mixture of both it really doesn't matter it's really up to you but depending on where you're streaming there's going to be different options like for here you have like the jar donation viewer count and stuff like that stream boss you know there 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 may be different based on where you're streaming to so let's go back to editor. Now for down here, the way I like to describe scenes and re and sources, I almost called it resources. But the way I like to call scenes are like PowerPoint presentations. So your PowerPoint slides are your scenes. The information on the scenes or on your slides are your sources. So whatever is here, if you wanted to add in like an image, then you know you pull that from your computer. If you wanted to do a browser source, browser sources are usually like HTML links. If you wanted to have a slideshow, you could do that. Display capture is gonna be like capturing your monitor. Game capture is usually for PC. Or if you're wanting to do stuff like text and having scrolling text on the screen, that's gonna be your text. If you have a capture card or a webcam, that's gonna be your video capturing device. And then you also have your widgets. So like your alert box. So this is when people go and actually like follow or host or anything like that. You can use the generic alert boxes um, that Streamlabs gives you, or you can use one of the themes, but you have to have the alert box added in there. So there's all these different options you guys have for which you can customize inside of each one of your scenes or slides. And then over on here is going to be your mixer type deal so you can choose to monitor and listen to what's going on on the desktop audio and you can output it still to the stream or you can monitor it only and not output it to the stream you can adjust the off sync which is like the delay so if you're streaming with a capture card there's going to be a delay for it so say the delay is 625 milliseconds so then you'll go and apply that to your desktop audio and also for your microphone. That way everything is in sync. Now there are other things too. So for, for your scenes, you have what's known as a scene transition, but it's making me have to add another scene. Fine. Scene transitions. So this is a little bit of an advanced thing real quick. Um, there's different types of scene transitions. So you can do a fade, you can do a swipe, a slide, you can do a stinger. Now stingers are those fancy ones that you see people that are professionally using them. So they have something that's really unique to them, whether it's like a static screen or um, maybe something's kind of like flying across the screen real quick before it transitions to the next scene. Um, it's like a, that's really what it is. It's just a transition. It's, it's just an image that goes or a video that kind of goes really quick and then cuts away. So it's pretty cool. But this is something that you guys don't have to worry about. Having cut or fade is just perfectly fine. But I can go into this into another video as well. Just let me know in the comments. And then one last thing as well is chat. 
So your chat will be displayed right here too. And you can hide it or you can keep it up there. And I mean, you have everything that you would normally have. So you have like all your emotes, you know, you can, uh, well, I thought you could do bits. Um, you have your chat rules. If you have chat rules implemented, you still have all your settings and everything. So, I mean, everything is literally the same as if you had it popped out. But, um, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about. I just don't want to keep you guys here too long. But anyways, I'm going to end it right here. That is pretty much a quick walkthrough of, you know, how that really is. Um, when I start getting into adding some things, I'll even show you guys about the test widgets and stuff like that. So that way you can see how they show up on the screen and how you can adjust them and how to mess with the sounds and all that stuff too. Um, and you can also use OBS or slobs or whatever as a recorder and everything like that. I'll go into detail about the stuff down here. So there's a lot of great stuff here right, right out of the right out of the box when you install it and download it and everything like that or download it and install it and everything. But definitely go ahead, take a look at the channel for other types of videos to kind of help you out with streaming. And if you have any questions, you know, let me know and I'll be happy to help you guys out as best I can. Um, but I do appreciate you guys' time. Thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you guys later.